Hello and welcome back to the second episode of our series on partial differential equations. So at the end of last week's video I left you with this problem here and here is the solution to that problem if you did get a chance to go through that. So for today we'll be going through classifying partial differential equations and we'll start off by having a quick look at order. Okay, so what exactly does it mean when we say the order of a partial differential equation? Put simply, that's just us going to be looking at the power of the derivative. So let's say we've got some function u and we're taking the partial derivative with respect to x. If we're just taking that derivative once with respect to x, then it is a first order partial differential. If I said, let's take the second derivative of u with respect to x, then that would be a second order partial differential. And so on and so forth. So we can go all the way up to the nth partial differential, and this would be an nth order partial differential. Okay, so order is pretty straightforward. Uh, let's say, though, we did have some sort of equation, and we've got du, dx, du, dy, uh, plus maybe du, uh, dy, dx. Okay, and let's say, I'll change that from an n. Let's say that's maybe a 3 over here. So let's look at the orders of these different terms. So for our first term here, we see that that is the third order. So that would be a third order partial differential. This term here is simply first order, okay? And this term on the end here, that is actually a second order, okay? So even though it only has dy dx once on the denominator there, it's still going to be a second order partial differential because we have differentiated it twice. Okay, so let's say these are all combined in some sort of equation. What order equation would that be? Well, we simply take the highest order within that equation, and that is the type of equation that it is. So this equation here would be a third order PDE. Generally, however, in mathematics and physics, you'll only tend to work with second order partial differential equations for what is about 99% of all of the problems that you will encounter when you start studying partial differential equations. Okay, so we've done with order. Now let's have a quick look at the general form of second order linear partial differential equations in two variables. Right? So the general form is most often written as such. So we'll have some constant a times by the second partial derivative of u with respect to x both times plus b u x y plus c u y y plus d u x plus e u y and then plus f u and then on the end here plus g where g is a function of x and y. Okay so it should be stated here and it's probably pretty clear that the two variables we're considering here are x and y so we said that u is a function of x and y and so a b c d e and f are all simply going to be constants that are multiplied by the partial derivatives of u and also by u itself here. And g is just some function. Uh, we'll have a bit more of a chat about that in a moment. So this is the general form of second order linear partial differential equations with two variables. So the two variables being x and y. Okay, let's now have a quick look at what it means if something is homogeneous or inhomogeneous. So for this example here, this general form, at the moment, this is inhomogeneous, and I'll make one change, and then it will become homogeneous. So that change I'm going to make, so I'm just going to set this right-hand side equal to zero. So a homogeneous equation contains either a partial derivative of the unknown function u, or the unknown function u itself. Okay, so that's what it means for something to be homogeneous. So if it's inhomogeneous, that's when we've got some other sort of function on the end here. So maybe g of x and y, since there's no u term there. Okay, and that's the quick difference between homogeneous and inhomogeneous equations. Let's now take a quick look at semi-linear, quasi-linear, and non-linear partial differential equations. So at the moment, this general form is representing linear partial differential equations. So what it means for a partial differential to be semi-linear is essentially it just means that it is linear in the highest order derivatives of that unknown function. Okay, so a quick example I might give is let's say we've got 
this partial differential e expression here. Now this is a first order partial differential expression. So we've got y times by ux plus x times by uy. And let's say that's equal to u squared xy. So we see that in the highest order of the derivatives, so here that's simply the first derivatives, it is linear. Since we are simply adding these terms together, no stress at all there, those are linear terms. But then we have a quick look over here on our right hand side, we have u squared, where u is that function of x and y. Since u squared is clearly nonlinear in nature, we would say that this is a semi-linear partial differential equation. Okay, so the general form, by the way, of a semi-linear partial differential equation is going to be the following. So we might have some function a of x and y by the first derivative of u with respect to x plus b, some function of x and y again, and that is the coefficient of u taking derivative with respect to y equal to some function f of x, y, and u. Now this is a little bit confusing. This is a first order partial differential equation here. And we can see that it's going to be semi-linear since we have linear expressions in ux and uy. And for non-trivial functions f, this will just simply become a semi-linear problem. Okay, so that's semi-linear. So what exactly does it mean if we have a quasi-linear partial differential equation? Now let's have a quick look at that. So for quasi-linear terms, the only thing that's going to change is the general form. And so what we're doing now is instead of having A, B, C, D, E, F as representing either some constants or some simple variables of X and Y and things like that, these can now in fact be functions of U and of the partial derivatives of U. So for example here, let's replace our C, that could in fact be DU DX. And that would now become a quasi-linear partial differential equation. Or, for example, we could have, instead of D, that might just be U. Okay, so the important thing to note here is that these coefficient terms are going to be a lower order than the term that they're with. So here we had a second order, so that means our coefficient here can be a first order, or it can simply be the unknown function, U itself. So that is a quasi-linear partial differential equation. And now for our final categorization of all of these partial differential equations, we lastly have nonlinear. So basically the easy way for me to define nonlinear partial differential equations is to say that it is not linear, it's not semi-linear, and it's not quasi-linear. Okay, so if you have some weird partial differential equation, for example, it might look like, let's say you've got the natural log of u, x, y, uh, divided through by some function f of x and y and u uh, all squared and plus some other terms and it's some monstrosity, you know, that will not be a linear, semi-linear, quasi-linear. It will in fact just be non-linear, okay? So non-linear is a very, very large area of partial differential equations, but it is a little bit more difficult to approach those problems. So, so that brings us now to our last quick topic for today. So that is hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly change our general form back to what we had earlier. So we have C and D. And now we're going to introduce a new term that I'm sure you'll be very familiar with. So we're going to be looking at the discriminant. So again, this is going back to the early days in mathematics when you covered the quadratic equation. So we have b squared minus 4ac, pretty standard definition of your discriminant. So we have a, b, and c. That's where they come from. Okay, so we've got those three different categories now. So hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic. Let's see when we have which one. If we have a discriminant that is greater than zero, then it is hyperbolic, okay? If we have a discriminant that is equal to zero, then we say that that is parabolic. And so therefore, for our last case, if we have the discriminant less than zero, that is simply elliptic, okay? So a couple things to quickly note here, however, as well, is that generally our hyperbolic and parabolic PDEs will normally be time dependent. So that means that you're gonna have one of the variables uh, being T for time. And for our elliptic, that's generally going to be for equilibrium problems.
So one other thing I will quickly mention as well is that for elliptic problems, we'll generally have to have this as a boundary value problem. And for parabolic and hyperbolic, you'll have this as an initial value problem and initial boundary value problems. Okay, so I'll write that down. So initial value problem and initial boundary value problems. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some of the examples of popular hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic partial differential equations. Okay, so the first one that we're going to look at is the wave equation. So the wave equation is one of those very, very popular equations in both mathematics and physics. So we have the second partial derivative of u with respect to time, uh, minus some constant c squared, times by the second partial derivative of u with respect to x, and that is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so let's quickly refer back to our discriminant. So we know our discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac, okay? So we go back and we see, well, a and c are both going to be the coefficients of those second order partial derivatives where we're taking the same derivative both times. And b is a coefficient of the second order partial derivative where we have mixed partial derivatives, okay? So x and y. So now let's go back down. And so you see, well, we've got, let's say that must be a, and well, we'll say that must be c, therefore. Okay, so now that means our discriminant looks like, well, zero minus four times by a, which would say is one, times by c, which we'd say is minus c squared. And so that now just equals simply four c squared, which must always be positive. So therefore, if we have a positive discriminant, then we know that that is a hyperbolic function, okay? So we can say, therefore, the wave equation is hyperbolic. Let's now have a quick look at the next one. So another very popular partial differential equation to see is the heat equation, which I believe we did see briefly last week. So for the heat equation, the standard way of writing that out is u sub t minus, let's say, gamma uh, u x x, and that's gonna be equal to zero. Okay, so again, the only term that we're really interested in here is those involved with our discriminant. So we know that we have b squared minus 4ac. Well, we only have one second order partial derivative here. And since both derivatives are with respect to x, we can say that's either a or c. So now our problem will become 0 minus 4 times by minus gamma times by, well, there is no other second order partial derivative, so that must mean that the other term is simply zero. So this whole thing is equal to zero, and so we know that when our discriminant is equal to zero, then we have a parabolic partial differential equation, okay? So now we can refer to our heat equation as a parabolic PDE. Okay, lastly, we'll have a quick look at another popular equation, Laplace's equation. So Laplace's equation is, again, one of those very, very popular equations, especially if you have studied physics, then you'll probably know Laplace's equation here. So we have the second partial derivative of u with respect to x plus the second partial derivative of u with respect to y is equal to zero. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our discriminant now here. So we have the discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So again, there's no mixed partial derivative here. So we know that b is going to be equal to zero. And then we have minus 4 times by a. Well, that's going to be coefficient. So that's 1. And c, again, is going to be 1. So that is simply equal to minus 4. And so we know from above that when our discriminant is less than zero, then that means it must be elliptic. Okay, and so as we said earlier, that's going to be describing equilibrium problems for the majority of the time. So we can go ahead and say that is elliptic. Okay, fantastic. So let's have a quick recap of what we've seen today. So we've seen looking at the order of partial differentials. We've seen the general form of linear partial differentials and semi-linear and quasi-linear partial differential equations and also non-linear, which is really anything else. We've also noted that homogeneous and inhomogeneous is simply dependent on whether you have another term that isn't a function of u or partial derivatives of u. And now lastly, we've looked at classifying hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic partial differential equations. Okay, so I'll leave you with one example here. 
And so you may wish to go through this problem in your own time. Now this is Trichomy's equation. So Trichomy's equation is concerned with describing supersonic aerodynamics. So Trichomy's equation is as follows. So we have x times u t t minus u x x equals zero. So what I want you to quickly consider is looking at the discriminant here. So again, a discriminant is going to be looking at, well, b squared minus 4ac. And so we have, again, b is going to be equal to zero. We have now minus 4 times by a, which is going to be x, and then c, which is going to be negative 1. So our discriminant now becomes minus 4 times x times minus 1, or simply 4x. So now the type of equation that this actually becomes depends on our x value. So that means for Trichomy's equation, we actually do have three different scenarios. So it can be either hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic. So I'll leave it with you. Have a quick look at this equation, do some research online, but I will give it to you now that between these three different scenarios, we are describing supersonic motion, subsonic motion, and transition between supersonic and subsonic. So I'll leave that with you. Have a think about what you think the corresponding x values would be for each of these different scenarios. So we have the real world scenarios there as well. And so I think that should wrap us up for today. So today we've gone through classifying partial differential equations. So we've looked briefly at the order of partial differentials, the general form of PDEs, homogeneous, inhomogeneous, semi-linear, quasi-linear, and non-linear, and of course, linear. And we've now briefly looked at hyperbolic, parabolic, and elliptic PDEs. Okay, so if you have enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like. And if you'd like to follow along for the rest of the series, then please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. As always, I hope you have a great day and stay curious.